Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. I think we are uh, ready to come online for a new day of streaming. Um, yo, what's up? Welcome back to Venkabot. Uh, game dev battleship action. My name is David. Yo, this is our, what, third or fourth battleship dev stream. And it's not really killing it in the views, but it is a nice way for me to kind of break away from my normal routine and do something a little more creative. Uh, something I like to do when I have the chance. And so I've been kind of enforcing my will upon the stream here by uh, by doing this. But that's cool. That's cool. Hey, making some progress. It's kind of nice. Where are we in Battleship anyway? Last time we moved our old Battleship server, this giant block of hideous code, into a new Battleship server, which is quite a bit more cleanly. But it's not quite developed yet. It's still missing a lot of things from the old uh, from the old system. And the old system also was not without flaw. It also had a lot of bugs. So today, I think we're going to continue to develop this new server and try and stomp some of the bugs. And then, if we have time, look at the uh, Battleship client here. Right, right now, this is a very simple client. All it does is receive text from the server and print it out. But what I would like is for the server to not send text, instead to send uh, JSON data, and that way individual clients can render that differently. Right? So that means I need to uh, fix this client here to receive that JSON and then have some intellect to um, parse it and spit it out as uh, you know text. So um, let's get started. First of all, why don't we look at the server and see where we're at here. So we have a, uh, a tile object which receives fire. And then it gives itself a peg, right? And it may also have a ship on it. We have a ship object, which doesn't know what tile it's on. Is that going to be an issue? I'll have to figure that out later on. But it has a title, which would be like, you know, uh, destroyer or submarine, something like that. It has a size, which is uh, how many tiles it takes up. And it has the amount of HP that it currently has. Uh, in this version of the game, it just defaults to its size. So, you know, a ship that's three tiles long, we need to take three hits before it sinks, as is typical of Battleship. We have a board object here. It's got um, some maps, right, for converting, uh, you know, an alphanumeric, you know, excuse me, like a, like a two-piece, you know, uh, XY coordinate, the way that Battleship traditionally handles that, which would be A through J and then 1 through 10. So J10 is in the lower right-hand corner of the screen and A1 is in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, or the board, I should say. And when you make a new board, what is this? For Y in range rows. Oh, I see. So you give it uh, rows and columns uh, when you create the board, and then it will automatically fill itself with tile objects. We have players. Each one has a UID. That's a unique ID given to them when they join the game. Um, it's, a, it's just a, uh, a numeral starting at zero, and every new player gets, you know, plus one added to their UID. They have a username, which can be, you know, whatever. It doesn't need to be uh, unique at all, because they have a unique ID anyway. Uh, and we have a game. That's the session that they belong to. So you have to make the game first, and then you create the players and put them in the game, I guess. And each player has a board defaults to none. So uh, when they get into the game, then the game will give them a board. And it has a uh, one method here, fire on. So it can fire on another player at a coordinate. So it uh, takes this coordinate string and it tries to parse it by splitting it at the comma. At the comma. There wouldn't normally be a comma in Battleship. It would just say A1. Hmm. Well, whatever. <laughs> Seems weird. So we have X coordinate, and then we get the uh, so yeah, we get the letter here, and we convert that into an actual um, coordinate. We convert this one as well, the Y coordinate. So you would send them over as A comma one. Seems weird. That's the sole purpose of having it be a letter and a number. And then um, we return whether or not we got a, a hit. And we return the peg that we get. So uh, we have the tile here. We receive fire. So the tile's up here. Receive fire returns the peg. It'll be either a hit or a miss, or it'll be a repeat fire error if it already has a peg on it. Okay. 
on that tile. Okay, so we also have this server object. Now the server object only handles the networking. Right? That's uh, that's sort of what we've been doing here. So we have a game and a server. Uh, I'm going to ignore the game for now and move down to the server. The server should only handle networking type stuff and um, the coordination of putting players into games. So what does it have? It has a host and a port for the socket and a list of connected players. Excuse me, it's a dictionary, huh? So it must be UIDs connected to players. Okay. It has a high UID. That way we know what the current highest UID is. So we can always uh, give each player a new one. Um, and we have a list of games. Right now it starts off with only one game. It should start with zero games, actually, but this is sort of like a... a um, I'm going to actually put a note here. should start with no games, but this is to simplify development. Yeah, and our current, uh, you know, uh, current uh, version here just has only one game. There's no way to add new games. It just always has one game that players will join. And in fact, uh, it even starts the game as soon as the server is um, started. All right. So when the server starts, um, it just uh, creates a thread to run its own run method here. And then uh, when it runs, it creates another thread to uh, send messages forever. And then to also uh, accept clients. So it accepts clients and it sends messages. Those are the two things that the server does. All right, so when it accepts a client, um, oh no, excuse me, when it, when it starts off with accepting clients, the first thing it does is it makes a new socket, and then it binds it and listens on it, and then it listens there forever and accepts new connections. So this, this thread always just accepts connections. Um, it's a loop. So it accepts a connection, and then it prints off who joined in, using these beautiful F strings from Python 3.6. And... Um, then it creates a login thread for them to log in with. So it accepts a client and then makes a thread for them to log in with. And that's the handle client method. Okay, and it starts that. So now we have handle client here. So whenever we get a new connection, we accept them, print a message off, and we kind of bust them off to a uh, handle client method here where we actually get them to log in and stuff. Yeah, we have this thing here. I have to make a lock so we can only have two players at a time per game. So the login message, why is the message... Oh, yeah, yeah, because this is going to be JSON. Right, so when you say a message, we're talking about a JSON message. All right, so we have a, a type is to print. That's our only message type so far, is to print. Um, we have a player ID. A player UID is negative one, because we don't have a UID yet for the player. And a message string is enter username. Okay. So that means that the client's got to print off enter username. Then it sends the message as JSON. Then we receive some uh, receiver message and we decode it. Well, it doesn't receive. It receives it as just raw data. It doesn't receive it as a message. That's uh, not right. So. Let's have a look at that right away. This client, it doesn't send messages. That only sends just raw data. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, that will not work, really, because the games only receive messages, right? You can't play the game yet. We'll have to fix that. So why don't we uh, put a note here? This should send... JSON messages, not raw strings. Then we need to go back to the uh, server and make a note here as well. Like with logging in, um, this should um, decode a JSON message, not accept a raw string. Okay, so right now it's accepting a string. Make a new player based on that string, right? We give them a high UID. And um, give them the username string, and we put them into the game we want, which is right now always game zero. 
because there should be a way to choose a game eventually. All right, so we have uh, we have pinned a player to that game. So now that game has a player. Then we have um, self. So right now the uh, thread is running for the game as well. So the game is waiting to have two players. Right now it only has one player, but hypothetically. Then we add uh, the player to our connected players list. We have no way to remove. We need to make a, a note here, right? Like um, when a player disconnects, they should be removed from this list. Or from this map, we should say, right? Because that's actually a dictionary. Then we increase the high UID, so every player gets its own UID. But again, due to our race condition, this could, um, you know, well, it's actually marks us here. Due to our race condition, two players could have the same UID. Is that bootcamp? Yeah, it's not exactly 3S. Uh, in many ways, it's similar. He said jokingly. Let's actually pull this down a little bit. All right. I'm actually going to minimize this, if you guys don't mind. What else needs to get minimized? I don't mind having Discord up there. What is this? Oh, that's, uh, yeah, okay, I know what that is. How you doing, Bootcamp? How's your day been, homie? So we have some race conditions here. We have a lot of threads going on, and they're not coordinating the way that they should. Now it says here, make a thread for receiving from the client and a thread for sending to the client. Okay, yeah. So right now we have a player, and they don't really get to do anything. They enter their name, and that's it. Okay. So we have no way to um, yeah, receive messages. And if we were going to try and send it, yeah, it has to actually, uh, we have to make a, a thread. Hmm. Well, are we going to be receiving from the client and sending to them? Or should uh, we, uh, no, no, I think we should, yeah. We should have just two threads for taking care of each client. It seems like a lot, though. I mean, shouldn't we just have like a, no, 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 I, I think that's probably for the best. So Bootcamp says, I'm more behind-the-scenes action, and my day has been pretty good. Uh, no complaints. That's pretty uh, unusual, man. So being Americans as we are, you gotta have some complaints. You might be a pod person, dude. If you tell me you have no complaints, I'll be afraid you're in a cult. Happy to hear that you had a good day, though. My day's just getting started here. Been a little bit rough. Might have some trouble getting Kyo hooked up with uh, RetroArch for Netplay. We're gonna be doing some Streets of Rage 2 in a few hours. In about two hours here, it's gonna be Streets of Rage 2 action. It's going to be a lot of fun, but I might play it by myself because we couldn't get Kyoto to get it working, I don't think. Here's a ball's life. How you doing, homie? How's your day been, dog? All right, so we got to make two threads here for receiving from the client and sending. Whenever we get a new message from the client, we should uh, make sure that it's parsed correctly. You know, um, when we get a new message from the client... Make sure it's uh, correct, and then um, put it into the game's message inbox. And now we can send messages. Um, so the server sends messages, huh? What is this all about? When, when does this get triggered? Up here, right? When we uh, um, handle a client. No, 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 it's this. Accept clients, send messages forever is a thread we get. Okay, so how does this work? Okay, okay. So I want to change... Um, these log names, right? We have these output message queues. Can I do that? I don't know how to do that in Vim off the top of my head. It's some kind of command. I think it's S command. Substitute, so it's like this, then like that, I think. And then uh, I want like output message queue, and then I want it to turn that into outbox. And then I put like C, I think, confirm. Uh, well, it says it pattern not found, but I found at least a couple of them.
So I did something right, but also something wrong. Paul says, how are you having a good day? I'm having a great day, Paul. How are you doing, dude? So my day is uh, having a nice chill start. The weather is warm. Got my window open. Doing some programming. What could be greater aside from playing a game of golf with a gator? Let's uh, do like, uh, you know, uh, Vim substitute. How does that work? Search and replace. I know I'm pretty close. Oh, I have to go through the entire... Yeah, so we have to do percentage to go through the entire uh, file. Then, uh... What does G stand for? What does the G, uh... It means global. Okay, okay, so that's what I want. So I want GC, I think. So let's try that again. Let's go back to Vim. We'll try his command again. He says, you fucking hacker! <laughs> Ball, I'm sorry. Here we go. So I want uh, percentage s slash output message q slash outbox slash gc. Boom, get them. Hell yeah, I want to replace that. Get it. Uh, get it. Get it. Get it. Okay. So now I want to do the same thing for the uh, for the uh, other message queue. What was that called? Like the inbound message queue, something like that. Input message queue. Yeah, I want to change that. So let's uh, do that command again. Let's do. Uh, colon, uh, percentage sign, if I can find that, s, forward slash, um, input, message, q, turn that into inbox, and then uh, go global and confirm, boom, get them, okay, so that's all fixed now, much uh, easier to read, I think, this whole message queue thing, I like inbox and outbox better, all right, So I've sent messages forever. So I don't need a, I don't need a thread for sending to the client, right? Get it? Because it's sending messages forever. It's always just going through into all the inboxes and outboxes and just sending shit all the time. It only needs a thread for receiving from the client. He says, please don't hack me. Fear not, dude, fear not. I wouldn't do that to you. You ever try programming for a ball's life? You might like it. It's a lot of fun. It's not as hard as it looks. If you start slow, you can make a lot of fun stuff very early on. All right. So um, now we've got a pretty good understanding how this works, right? It's a thread here that sends messages forever. It just goes through and sends messages, and it sleeps after a while. It goes through all the games in its library and goes through the entire outbox and sends every message to the client it's supposed to go to. Very, very simple. I like it. All right, so now we let's look at the game, the actual game itself. What is this guy going on here? It's got inbox and outbox and players. It has a, uh, a start, um, you know, method which launches a new thread with itself running. Then we have this run thread here. Now this run thread is where all the game logic should go. He said, no, I don't know what you are doing. Yeah, we're actually making a Battleship clone here, dude. We're making, like, you know the game Battleship, the board game? We're programming it so we can play it over the internet. That's what I'm doing. I'm making my own version of Battleship. Just for fun. As a way to express myself creatively. So when the game is running here, it's got all this logic, right? We have this logic here. All, this, uh, all these lines tell the game what to do. So it says, while length of our players list is less than two, so if you have less than two players, then print to all the players, waiting for a second player. And then rest, you know, before you loop again, wait for two and a half seconds. So basically it's saying, you know, while we have less than two players, then notify the players that we're waiting to have two players. And then um, do nothing for two and a half seconds, and then do it again. So in two and a half seconds, it's going to check again, see how many players we have. Still less than two, then print off the message again. Very simple. Then once we break out, once we have uh, two players or more, then it no longer does this anymore. All this stuff here doesn't have to you know work anymore because it says while there's less than two players, there's less than two players there. So now uh, now we have two players hypothetically, right? They both joined in. So now we can get out of this loop. So we can start here now. Now we have all this shit going on. So now we can print all players. Game start. We have two players. Still the game starting. So um, for our players, so for each player that we have, give them a board. Because in Battleship, each player has their own board, right? So we give them each a board here. 
Then we have, uh, you know, we print a message off saying, you know, the connected players are so-and-so and so-and-so. Then we make our new turn. Okay. So I think this should work, but we have no game. This is where the game ends right now on um, Ball's Life. So as you can see, we have no game yet. All we have is a uh, uh, little bit of code here that waits for two players. And then once they both join up, it says the game starts. But because we're still making this program, it doesn't really work yet. So it just says, you know, game start, and then nothing happens. It ends. It's done. So let's make sure that still works, because I haven't done this, um, you know, in a week. Let's make sure our code works. I'm going to launch the server here. I'm going to do a pi battleship server.py. Okay, so it seems to be working for there. I'm going to make two clients and connect them together. So let's uh, do uh, pi battleship client.py. Let's see what happens here. Okay, it's working so far. So our server received the connection over the internet. And, um, you know, sees local host. That's me. I connected. And then what's a username? I'm going to be David. Boom. Something crash? Oh, here we go. So that says, wait for a second. So this is our code we talked about, right? The ball is life. Every two and a half seconds, it's going to say, waiting for second player. Now, that's this code right here. Let's go look at it, shall we? This code right here. So while we have less than two players, then print to all players, waiting for second player, and do that every two and a half seconds until we have two players. So we have only one player here. It's going to print this off every two and a half seconds. Waiting for second player. Waiting for second player. Yeah. Waiting for second player. Yeah. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm actually going to go connect to it with the second player. Let's do um, pi battleship client dot pi. Okay, so what's your username? Oh, Splavid. Now we have two players. Game start. There, so it works. Kind of players, David and Splavid. Right, so there's all of our code right now. It says game start, but there's no game yet. That's what we're going to try and fix today. Um, we actually coded in the game. The game actually was working here in our old program. The old program had the game pretty much completely working, but it was really ugly code. And ugly code is very hard to manage. It's kind of hard to add new features and make the game better if your code is kind of hard to look at. It's hard to explore, right? Because it's kind of like a, a map. And if your map is all twisty and curvy and lines are crossing over, it's hard to understand it, right? And it's kind of hard to, to fix it and make it better. So I started over again. This is the old server. Um, I started over again with a new um, server. So my goal now is to translate some of that stuff from the old server into the new one and make this game work. So here's what I'm going to do first of all. I am going to put this, um, to make this more readable, I'm actually going to make all this logic here into its own, um, they call it a method, right? Its own little block. That way it makes it easier to read. Right now we have this run method, right? See so here it says def run. That means we have a method, excuse me, it's like a, a little miniature program called run, and that runs the game. But because the game is so complex, right? The game is very, very complex. Let's not have all the logic be in run. Let's have the logic broken up into smaller programs. So here's what I'm going to do. Watch what I do here. I'm going to go uh, make some new lines here. I'm going to say def... Um, you know, wait for players. See? Self. I'm going to put all this code, um, I'm going to copy my code here again. While length self.players is less than two. It's reading this from above. Self.print to all players. Waiting for second player. Time.sleep 2.5. I'm going to say, uh, you know, uh, um, self.print to all players, um, you know, player two joined, instead of game start, I don't like game start. I'm going to say a uh, for player in our list of players, we're going to give them each a board. So for all the players, you know, give them a board. So it's 10 by 10 uh, tiles as is standard rules. Then we're going to, um, you know, I'm actually going to copy this code up here. All right. Then paste it down here. All right. So now, um, I actually want to change it. I don't like this term wait for players, right? We're going to call this like, uh, um, because it's not really waiting. This is the only waiting part right here. Actually, it does more than just wait, right? It actually prints off a little bit of messages here. So how about we call this, like, you know, um, collect players, right? Because we're collecting the players. Now I can get rid of all this code up here and run. And just very simply tell it to run this collect players program we wrote. You know, it's a function. It's called a method. So I'm going to say, uh, you know, 
simply uh, uh, just run it self dot collect players there you go so now our run method is much simpler you know we wait for the players we collect them here give them a message and now we can do another method um, so once we have our players what do we want to do we want to uh, ask them to place their ships right So because both players can place ships at the same time, we need another thread for this. We need, uh, when I say a thread, I mean um, uh, a program that can run at the same time. Normally, it goes down in a straight line, and it waits. It waits after every line of code. But we want to actually be able to have two programs going at the same time, so we need threads. So I'm going to say, uh, you know, um, let's just make our program, right? We're going to actually make a new um, method here def, uh, you know, place ships self, and we want a player. That's all that we should need. So we want to, uh, we want to actually place ships with players. So what that means is we need to put messages into our outbox. So um, let's see here. How am I going to do this? I think first of all, I want a new method called print to player. So I'm actually going to just make this empty. When I see pass, it means an empty, uh, empty function. We have this print to all players uh, method below. I want just def print to player self um, uh, player and message string. All right, so uh, I'm just going to say. Uh, Message equals. Well, no, no, we can just do like we can just do uh, self dot outbox dot append, and then I can say uh, you know like this um, message type is to print player UID is player dot UID. And then message string is message string. That's how I like to do that, right? There. So I have a simple function, print a player. That's going to handle that nonsense for me. So we want to place ships, right? So how do we do that in the old? Let's actually just go copy-paste our code and then um, fix it. Let's go to the old server here. Where was the ship placement on our old server here? Oh my god, this old code is so ugly. So here's the firing logic, so we have to go before that. We have, yeah, we have a pregame, self.pregame. Okay, okay, okay. So where's our pregame? Here it is. Coordinate and orientation. I gotcha. Seems pretty simple. Let's uh, copy this. Oops. Undo. There we go. So let's uh, go back to our new server and paste this code over. Oh, I think I... Oh, here we go. Okay. So we have a prompt string. Um, coordinate and orientation for blank. So instead of this, I actually just want to say... Uh, um, well, no, no. Actually, this is, we want the string to be here forever. So for ship and player dot ships, our player doesn't even have any ships yet. They have a board, but no ships. Now players have uh, no ships right now. They have a board, but no ships that belong to them. So where are our ships stored right now? We have a board. It doesn't have a ships um, variable. I think the player should have some ships. That's what I think. I mean, the tile has a ship that's on it. Okay. Well, let's give the player some ships then, right? So, um, you know, they don't have a board yet. 
we're going to say, um, you know, self.ships is also none. Right? It doesn't have any ships yet. In fact, let's make it just an empty list that we can append to our ships. So uh, when we collect our players, we give them a board right here, right? I also want to give them a whole bunch of ships. So I think for that, what I want is a ship template, right? I think that's what I want to do here. So I'm going to say, um, you know, the game's a ship template. Let's just go up here. Uh, I don't know if I want to actually do that yet. Why don't we do that in run? Right? So we're just going to say self.ship template equals, and then we need to go find the name of the ships. I think we actually have that in our old code. Where's our ships? Where do we get all these ships? So we have a, a ship has a, you know, all this stuff is kind of, oh, here we go, here we go. Self.ships. I got gotcha. you. So we have a, a name here, a size, and amount of health. We don't need all that for now. And that, I think what I want then is, uh, so we have carriers, battleships, cruisers, submarines. Okay. So the carrier is five. Let's go enter that immediately. New battleship server. The game itself, um, we want uh, a battleship, and it's got five. It's, you know, a length of five. We've got a cruiser. Right, or do we? No, no, no. Is that... No, no, no. We have the carrier's five. Okay, and then we have this... Uh, what was the other one? The battleship was four. Okay. This is going to have to take you on another line, I think. Okay. So we've got a carrier. We've got a battleship, which is four. We've got a cruiser, which is three. And a submarine, which is three. Then we have a destroyer, which is two. Okay, that's our ship template for this game. So now we're going to be placing ships. So we're going to say, uh, so now we have uh, players, right? So we're going to say, uh, give, them a, give them a board and give them all their ships. So uh, we're going to say four ship um, uh, ship title, right? Because ships have titles, right? That's what we decided on. Ships have titles, yes, and size. So for... Where was it? Here. For ship title, ship size, in... Self dot ship template, but the thing is, it, it's, uh, I need to find the right code to make that work. I need to to parse the map into key value pairs. So let's go here to the map dictionary. Length, blah, blah, keys, keys, clear, copy, get items, keys, pop, pop item, update values. So we can get their values or we can get their keys. Um, so I don't know how to get both. I think you, maybe you can't get both, which would be fine. I think it makes more sense in that case to just get a list of the keys, right? So let's go back to our code. Battleship server. And say, you know, for ship title 
in self.ship template. We want to say uh, player.ships append a new ship that with the title of ship title and a length of uh, you know self dot ship template ship title. All right. So let's actually do it like uh, you know we'll just say new ship equals ship ship title self dot ship template ship title. Actually, no, no, let's actually do it like this. I'm sorry. I'm now being indecisive here about how I want to how I want to arrange this, organize it. I want to say, um, you know, ship length equals, or no, no, excuse me, uh, ship size equals self dot ship template ship title. There we go. So now we have a ship size and a title. So now we can very simply say, you know, ship title, ship size. Easy. Okay. For how's it all even for a ship, right? A, a size and a title, I believe. Yes. So we make a bunch of ships and give them to the player. As soon as they join, they get a board and they get some ships when they join in. Okay, so now they have their own ships. So let me go back to here. For ship in player ships. Um, this is going to send all, but I don't want to send all anymore. I want instead to I want to do it like this. How about we say uh, you know uh, print to, excuse me, Self dot print to player. Um, F coordinate and orientation for you know uh, ship dot ship name. Like this, then we're going to say ship dot ship size. Okay. So let's uh, get rid of that. And that's going to receive the coordinate. I don't want that either. I want a uh, to actually. Hmm, well, how am I going to handle this? It's going to be asynchronous, right? Let's see, I want to... Uh, yeah, it's too long. Uh, I think in that case, I'm going to... Uh, do it like so. I'm going to actually go here and break a line. Like that. All right. And now we don't have ship size anymore. We have a ship dot size and a ship dot title. All right. But that still wouldn't fit up there, I don't think. I'm almost certain. Yeah, I'm going to double check. Yeah, not quite. All right. I think it would still actually make more sense to um, format it the same way we did before, right? So we're going to do like a prompt. Let's do it the way it was. Actually, let's undo everything. Undo, 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 
undo here. I want this prompt string after all. Let me just format it. You know, I think it's probably for the best. Let's do uh, print a player prompt string dot format ship dot title ship dot size. There. Now I can get it nice and neatly on one line. So now we have this uh, coordinate and orientation. It's received, but in our case, we're going to be getting it as a, a message in our inbox. So how do we wait until we have to check it every once in a while, right? You have to check it every once in a while. So it would make more sense. Right now we're thinking too linearly, right? Thinking in terms of a linear sequence of prompts and responses. When I want it to be asynchronous, so when we're asking the player to place some, uh, place some ships, really, we should just be waiting for them to send us a certain message with their ship and uh, the placement of those ships, the coordinates. And then we, can have to, we have to parse that. So, how do I want to handle this? I want to make a new message type, right? Hmm. Okay, so what do we have a message? We have this, um... Oh, we don't have messages. They're not, yeah, they're not unique types. They're just strings. So we have a, we have a new message type, you know, uh called like um, position ships, something like that, place ships. And it's going to contain every ship. Hmm. Well, we have a problem. I should open up my notes. Let's go here. Go to the desktop. Go to uh, video work. Scripts. Battleship, and then go to our notes.txt. All right, so I want to do some brainstorming here. Okay, so I'm gonna actually make a new entry here for you know, 420, 2018. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. All right. So, um, you know, previous versions of the server have worked on a very simple textual um, prompt and input mechanism. Now that we're moving over to JSON messages, it would make more sense for the client to be able to send messages that the server can deal with, you know, asynchronously. For instance, instead of prompting the player for the placement of every ship, one at a time, it would make more sense to send the client a list of ships to place Hmm. The ship's a place. And then the client would respond with that same list of ships and some coordinates for them. Right? And the client would handle a bunch of bullshit with, you know, prompting the user for stuff. Yeah. 
Okay. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, so uh, then the game would check its inbox repeatedly with a break in between checks to see which players have placed their ships. It would need to also, you know, uh, uh, error check the placements in case the client sent some bullshit over. Alright, so uh, in that case, I need a new message type, right? Like a ship placement prompt. So let's, um... Uh... Let's go back to place ships, right? So this, this is handling all the logic that the the, the, uh, the client should handle, right? Going through the ships and asking, you know, a prompt for each one. In that case, let's um, make a new message. Let's say, uh, um, let's make a, we have a print to player, print to all players. Let's actually go here and say death, um, prompt for ship placement and we want to send it to a player good vibe yeah we actually finished the game pretty much completely on an old version this battleship server here is almost completely running actually you can play the entire game if you sync all the enemy ships there's no screen that says you win that's the main shortcoming you, have to, you can keep playing when the game's actually over but because the code is so hideous i decided to go back and restart and um make it much more sensible and use this code as like a template so I can actually go back and harvest the logic from this code and translate it to a much better looking uh, um, you know, much better looking code base here. Right now this code is um, very immature in terms of the game. You can't play the game at all in the new code. But what I'm doing is I'm making the code more elegant so that once this, uh, um, this skeleton is working, it'll be easy to program the game and other games in the future, like other versions of Battleship, other variants. So what I'm doing now, basically, is I'm kind of making a framework for Battleship. Before, I just hacked it in. I just hacked in Battleship right here. This is all a bunch of real straightforward, brute force code to make Battleship work. And now that I have that working, it's like a rough draft. I'm making a refined draft where we actually have a more sensible skeleton to work from. But that means that, yeah, I'm back at square one. The game is not running at all. In fact, I'm making a prompt right now for ship placement. So can, when the game starts, you can ask the player where they want their ships to be. That's where we're at. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to make a new message, right? Message equals... Message type is going to be... Um, ship placement prompt. And that means we're going to need a player UID. It's going to be uh, our player.uid. It's actually break lines here. How's it doing? Good vibe. And then instead of a message string now, we want a, a list of ships. Right? So I want to say, like, uh, uh, list of ships. Or how about ship map? And I want to have it be like our template. Right, that's what we need. So we're going to send self.ship template. All right, so now we have this ship map. All right, it's got a, a list of ship names and their sizes. I feel like ships should have UIDs. That way they could all have the same, you have two ships with the same name, wouldn't cause an issue. Uh, or we're going to say, yeah, every player should only have one ship of each name. How about that? That makes sense. Okay, I can live with that. So I have this prompt for ship placement, right? I'm going to append this now. So I'm just going to say, you know, self.outbox.append message. In fact, it would make more sense to skip that line and just say, you know, uh, excuse me, self.outbox.append, and then here is our message. It 
it ended it farther. Is that actually more elegant? Uh, I, I think... Uh, no, it's not more elegant. It has to be ended it farther. Fuck that. So let's just uh, do the way it was. Fuck indenting. I just want to say, you know, message equals this. And then we can one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And this can probably go on the same line now. Yeah, okay, I like that more. Let's fix that up here too. Um, this extreme indenting is just a pain in the ass. Especially going to go down here to the bottom and say self.outbox.append message. And go up here and just say message equals, put this up on this line. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I fucked that up. Here, I'll do it again. Like that. There, that's much better. So, Kiffer says, I'm alright, thanks. Considering you're sending my PS4 to be fixed before its warranty runs out, Dragon Ball Z crashes a lot with an error code. He mentioned that before. My only online game, but I'm concerned it'll do it with Street Fighter. Huh. Before its warranty runs out. Well, I mean, I imagine you've already done some research on what that code means, right? What does the code mean? Maybe you should call them first. I recommend definitely getting a hold of Sony, tech support, telling them about the error, and asking them what they recommend. Sounds to me like you might need to send it back before the warranty runs out, yeah. There's a parsimony yeah, I code. I'm a coder. So this message, we're printing to player, print to all players. Prompt for ship placement. Okay, so we have this ship placement prompt message type now. Okay, okay, okay. So now this logic here needs to be moved over to the client, right? That is where we are at. We're starting to make the client a little bit more intelligent and make the server less intelligent. Because the client needs to share a lot of the responsibility here. So let's uh, go to receive forever, right? We say, if it's a print message, it's the message type. Um, just print the message. However, we have a new message type now. Let's say if message, uh, excuse me, message type, if the message's message type is um, ship placement prompt, now we have this extra logic, right? This new logic for the ship placement prompt. And I'm going to actually paste that right here. Okay. So um, now we're going to say for ship in message dot, what was it, what I call it? Was that called ship template? Let me see here. What we have here in the ship prompt. Ship map. Yes, the ship map. Let's go to, um, I'm sorry. To the client, yes, here. In message uh, ship map, doesn't it default the keys anyway in for loops? I don't think I even need this. Uh, down here, I did like a for loop before. Where was it? I just want to give them the ships, right? No, I guess not. First ship, okay, I got you. I got you. All right, so what am I missing here? I'm building and it says, wow, this is dope. <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way, Harsimus. Yeah, we're playing, we're making Battleship here. We're making a Battleship clone. I was telling Good Vibe earlier that we actually had a working version here in our old server. It's an online Battleship, basically. You play Battleship online. This version was almost fully working, but the code is fucking hideous, right? It's more like a rough draft. So now I'm using this logic that I've written for Battleship to translate it into a much better looking... Um, you know, much better looking, um, more elegant, more navigable code base. So I'm trying to make the actual, um, you know, skeleton of the code more readable while using the logic I wrote before for actual play, uh, for playing Battleship. Goodfab says, yeah, it's a common error code and lots of people seem to get it with different games. If you click on, uh, click to return the PS4 to on their site, uh, five options, this error code is one of the reasons you're returning it. So he says, if it happens with one game, it's the game's fault. But I think they're just saying that. Never had an issue with my Xbox One. You should go sort their code out, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree, Good Vibe. I think that you should uh, definitely send it back for warranty, at the very least. I wish you could return it, to be honest. I wish you could return to the retailer, and then just get a new one. Because that sounds pretty whack. 
I agree that I think that, you know, say, oh, if it's only one game, it's the game's fault. But if you're, if nobody else has this problem with, you know, with Dragon Ball Fighters, then it's probably fucking the console's fault. I'm sorry, Harsmus. No, I don't have a GitHub. I've considered it in the past, but most of my projects are, you know, just for my own, um, my own benefit, my own enjoyment. So I've never actually got around to figuring out GitHub. So I write all the code, you know, all the stuff on my, um, on my stream here is self-written code um, in terms of handling the break screen and handling all kinds of stuff behind the scenes. But I never did actually get GitHub working. Maybe I will. Want to walk me through it? If you want to look at it, we can maybe get that working here. Good Vibe says, apparently after so many months, you need to send it to Sony and not to the retailer. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, yeah, it depends on the retailer's return policy. Not sure how long you've had yours. Most um, retailers would be like 30 days. Is there a return limit? That's exactly what you're talking about. All right, so well, here I'm, I'm at the server, the new server. Okay, so it was Amazon, so that might help. Oh, no, I don't mind distracting you. That's probably the whole point of this. You know, it's a real chill stream here, a real chill coding stream. We can talk about whatever we want while I work. So, yeah, this logic, I have to go mess with the server now, or the client. Okay, so we have this client now, right? And now we have this prompts. So, yeah, coordinate. Oh, yeah, I got you. Okay, okay, so for ship in message, ship map, right, in the ship map. We have a title, excuse me, so we want first ship title in the ship map. I want to say, you know, uh, um, print the prompt string right here. We're going to form the, the ship, uh, uh, ship title. I'm actually going to say, you know, ship size equals... Um, message, ship map, ship title. Here we go. That's our ship size. All right. That's what I want. Noise. I can live with that. It prompts. I don't have this prompt, right, for every ship. But then what do we do with it? I have to make a new kind of message, like a uh, a response. So actually I actually want to make my own ship map. Right? That's what I want to do. I want to make my own ship map that has placements, like coordinates, and uh, have a coordinate and, a, and an orientation. Right, for the ship. So we have a new message type in that case. It would be like a ship placement response. Right? We have a prompt, we need a response. So, uh, let's call it ship placement. That's what we'll call it. Message type. So, I want a new ship map. Right? I want to say, um, you know, uh, ship map equals an empty dictionary. So we prompt for what you know the, the ship size and shit, and then I want to. Uh, well, I don't need to print it off. I can just there's an actual prompt. Um, yeah, there's like a prompt. Yeah, input is called input. So I want to say. Uh, you know, uh, input. Well, no, no, because we have this input here. That should. Oh, but I have a problem already because send forever only sends. Okay. Har says, "Yeah, GitHub is pretty simple if you are just working on stuff by yourself. Version control over many people and many branches can get messy sometimes. Yeah, that's why I really haven't really screwed around with it that much." Okay, so now I need to change the way Send Forever works to make this work the way I want. So... Yeah. I'm not even convinced I want to Send Forever anymore. In fact, I'm pretty sure I don't want to Send Forever anymore. Okay. Yeah. Here's what I want to do. This is kind of crazy. It's going to break my client for now. 
but I want to uh, not send forever at all. all. Right. And I want to instead say, uh, you know, I don't need a send thread either. All I need is a receiving thread. Now I want to say, I want to make a new message type called prompt, like text prompt. Um, we don't even need a, te we don't even need to, uh, need a text prompt. We just need a new message type for logging in. Like a login prompt. So how about uh, if message is uh, a login prompt Um, excuse me, uh, if message message type. I'm sorry, guys. So programming on stream is kind of tough because you're trying to talk the whole time. It kind of makes it easy to lose your train of thought. Um, I want it to be um, like a login prompt. Then I want to say, you know, print. Um, or we can just say, you know, input. Like username equals input. Username like that. Hits up, Egan. Let's go. Yo, how's your day been, man? It's like this username, right? I want to respond with a uh, login, which right now only re only involves a username. So I'm going to say, uh, you know, message. Um, equals message type it's going to be uh, you know um, login and then username is username then I want to have like uh, you know like a player UID. That's what it was called, right? I think is negative one. Let me go double check. That's what the uh, standard is. Player UID, yeah. Okay, so you can go to, go to work. Good stuff, dude. Glad you stopped by, man. Good luck and Godspeed, homie. Good luck and Godspeed. All right, so now it sends this username. I'm actually gonna send that now, right? So it prompts for the username, then it's going to send it. So, uh, you know. Connection. Dot. Send. Uh, message. Oh, we actually have JSON. I do have JSON already, so I'm actually going to do some JSON encoding here. So JSON. Dot. Um, is it... Dump? I don't think I want to dump S. I want to, I want to encode a string. How do you encode strings in JSON again? I can probably check my server for that, huh? So the server here, and it sends messages, right? Here we go. Uh, yeah, dump string. Output message encodes it. Okay. So send all. Let's do that real quick. Connection.send all. JSON.dump the string into JSON. Message, and you encode it. Okay, so we have this login message now. This definitely seems uh, mad sus. I'm breaking a lot of code here. I'm kind of moving kind of fast, changing a lot of code at once. It's all right. So we have this login prompt now. It sends a new message type called login, which just has a username for now. Okay, so ship placement prompt, all right. So we have a ship map. And a prompt string. All right, so we're uh, for the ship. We uh, print this prompt, but I don't want to print this prompt. I want to actually uh, do like an input, right? So it's going to be like input. So I want to say like uh, you know chord. 
orient equals uh, input a prompt icon plus this string here. Actually, I can just put that here. All right, it's still too long, though. Just barely. All right. Do I want to shorten this at all, or do I want to knock this down to another line? Prompt string dot format ship title ship size chord orient. I kind of just gonna knock it down another line. I think like this. Okay. So this input now we have this chord orient. Now I'm not gonna send this. I'm gonna break it up right here into two halves and store the data into our ship map. Right. So. The ship map is going to be a list of titles, and each title is going to have coordinates and um, coordinates and an orientation. So I want to say. Uh, um, we have this chord right now, right? So I'm actually going to say uh, um, ship map ship title equals a new map. It's going to say um, coordinate coordinates, right? That's going to be, uh, you know, the. Uh, how we to we used to do it like coordinate first, right? So that would be negative one is the first. No, no, just zero, right? Just zero. That would be uh, chord orient zero. The first character. Oh no 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 no! We want up to negative one. That's right. That's right. Like that. Let's break this line. Then we want, uh, you know, orientation. It's going to be the remaining part of the string. The last character in this case. All right, so now we've updated our ship map. So now our ship map has the ship name and its coordinates. So that's great. That's for every ship. Every single ship gets that. First ship title in the message is the ship map. All right, so we're making our own ship map. So now we're going to say, you know, um, let's change. I don't like message. Let's actually change versus message here. Because now we have incoming and outgoing messages. I'm going to say, uh, you know, uh, for you know, response, you know, response equals that response message type response response um, we're gonna say you know request So we're a client, right? We make requests. And the server sends responses. All right. Request. A little transitivity. So this is interesting. <laughs> yeah, I hope you feel that way. I can see how it could be pretty boring. If you have any questions, please let me know. We're writing this in Python, which is my favorite programming language. Don't at me. Response message type, okay. Plus prompt. Gotcha. Ship prompt type. Okay, so. And 
in the response. Ship size. Okay, so we want again. This is response now, not message anymore. Input. I ship ship size. Ship map. Ship title. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so now I can say um, request equals um, message type. It's gonna be a new message type here called uh, ship placement. Ship placement. Okay. Then I'm gonna say uh, you know. Uh, Player UID equals uh, the response. I'm already seeing a, there's a bug here. There's a bug. Player UID. The bug is that you can submit any player UID you want. We have no way to confirm or deny that you're that player you claim you are. You can, you can place somebody else's ships. We need to send them, uh, you know, a unique code to prove who they are. So I'm going to actually uh, write that somewhere in a note. I'm going to say, um, you know, ship map is ship map. There we go. So we send this request. Let's do um, connection dot send all json.dumps request encode it. There we go. So now you have this prompt that comes up, supposedly. I'm going to say right here this is insecure. Anybody could use any player UID. I'd like to fix that, you know, in due time. Okay, so now we have this prompt that comes up if we get a prompt, uh, our, a prompt for our ship placement. Okay. So let's go back to our server in that case, right? Now we have to fix a few things. We have to change the way login works for one thing. Because now we have this new type. So some clients, right? I don't want to just send a raw request anymore. Um, here's the handle client, right? I don't want it to print anything anymore. I want to send a message type that's a uh, login request. Or a login prompt, I think it's called, right? Login prompt. Doesn't need to have a message anymore. This might even go on one line now. I'm not sure why it was split up two lines in the first place. There we go. Actually, it might all fit up here. It does. Okay. All right. So I'm going to call this, um, yeah, the log message is fine. So send all the message. Now it's going to encode. Right now it just kind of takes a, uh, encodes wherever this is, you know, decodes that. But now I want to use something different. So let's double check our client here. The client, um, on an input prompt message, uh, where's the message type? Login prompt, right? It sends a username field. Okay. So let's uh, go back to the server. Okay. So now we're going to say uh, you know, handling the client. The username string is the response stripped decoded. But I also want to do uh, JSON, uh, you know, I want to load a string here. So I want to say that is uh, JSON.load S. This string, and I want to say, you know, username, get the username out of it. So I'm going to say, like, let's just say, you know, um, login request is this. Okay. That works. Assume the request is uh, formatted correctly. I'm going to call this a bug. Bug. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to say now, um, you know, username equals the login request 
username. There we go. That should work now. So logging in, logging in should work. Let's, uh, so where's our, our ship placement anyway going on here? Prompt, you gotta send the prompt, that's fine. Place ships. Okay. So this can all go bye-bye now. Now for place ships, I actually just want to say, you know, prompt for ship placement player. And then, uh, you know, we're good to go, basically. Come on, you know, um, put code here for actually placing the ships. Or something. All right, let's just see if we got uh, everything totally ruined now. I expect the answer is probably going to be yes. I'm going to kill these um, clients here. And then kill the server. Relaunch the server. Will it even run? No. Invalid syntax on line 97. Okay, so let's go to the server here. Where's line 97? Right here. Yes, I want to get rid of this uh, parenthesis there. Get them. All right, so that's working for now. Now we're going to have this thing. Let's see if this will still prompt me for a username. Oh, hey, it does. All right, so can I still be David? Is that going to work? No. Uh, it's not a defined connection. Okay, so I can actually kill this now. Let's go to the client, and what's our name of our connection here? We've got con.send. I don't have a con, though. What am I receiving from in that case? Connection.receive. Okay. So I have a thing called a connection, but not a con. Here we go. Receive forever connection. I'm just going to call this con. We all know what con is. Anybody else got a connection? I don't think so. All right. I'm going to call this con as well. Server con should be connection. Create connection. Okay, gotcha. Receive thread. Okay. Go down here. We're going to call it server con now. All right, let's see if that works. Serving forever. Prompt. I'm David. Boom. Nada. So what do we got here? Line, uh... Where? Line 35 and receive forever. Right here's our problem. No, wait, it's not. Mess oh yeah, here's our problem, yeah. So now instead of having message type, we have um, response. Okay, but why should have gotten that in the first place? We should have gotten... Uh, you know, we sent our username. Oh, 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 oh I need elifs here, not, not ifs. There we go. Ellis has our problem. All right, let's uh, go back to the server again. We all we have an error here too. On line one fifty three and handle client. So where's that at? Right here. We have a username string. So I want to fix this here. But why is it username? Why don't you make it username? It's just it's, it goes without saying. It's a string. Okay. Is the player have a username string, or is that just a username? Player says username. Okay, that's weird. All right, let's kill the server as well. Is the client dead? Yes. Let's relaunch the server. Relaunch this client. I'm David. Boom. Oh, okay, it seems to be working. All right, let's connect as Splavid. Boom. All right, so now something crashed. No? 
So how come we didn't get our prompt yet for uh, our ships? Probably because it's not in the actual game code, right? Place ships. Yeah. So I want to go up here, actually. We collect players. Now I want to place ships. So, uh, you know, four players uh, for player in self dot um, players um, self dot place ships player. So we're placing ships. But here's the thing. We're sending a prompt, right? We send the prompt out, but we don't actually do anything with the response. So, yeah, we, we, so we send the prompts out. That's fine. Place ships. Collect players and place ships. Kyo said I couldn't get it to work. I'm sorry, Kyo. Yeah, I'm sorry it was um, that weird. Now, what probably happened is the same thing as we happened last time. Probably place you to rage two. Probably mostly by myself. Maybe uh, somebody else will want to join in that has retro arc. But you're welcome to commentate though, Kyo, if you want. Okay. Yeah, maybe next week we can uh, we can play uh, Streets of Rage maybe off stream, or maybe we can play Streets of Rage uh, three, something like that. Or we can return to two. I don't see why I shouldn't be able to return to two as well. It seems weird that it wouldn't work at all. All right, let's see here. So, um, yeah, again, I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry that it didn't work out for you. I really thought it was going to be simple. But nothing's ever simple on a computer, right? <laughs> so I want uh, place ships as like its own thing, right? Let's just actually just place ships. And then say, uh, you know, for player in self.players um, prompt for ship placement player. I'm going to say, uh, you know, player dot ships placed equals false. And then prompt them. Okay. So now we need like a th to constantly check for both players to be ready. That's what we're going to do next. I'm going to go up here and actually uh, get rid of this. I'm going to go say place ships here. Like this. Alright, so, um, you know. Now we're prompting all the players for their ship placement. And we're going to say, um, you know, while um, I learned some trick last time we streamed to check to, for an entire list to be true. It was some kind of, let's go double check that. It was some kind of built-in function. Let me go back here and check uh, the built-in functions. All, oh, that was it, right? If all of them are true. Okay, okay, okay. Here's what I'm going to do then. I'm going to say, uh, let's go back here. While all, we're going to make a list comprehension here. Excuse me, uh, how about while not all, right? While not all player, um, yeah, so I have to make a list comprehension here. That would be x for x. No, that would be like x dot uh, ships placed for x in self.players. So while all chips aren't placed, 
I want to basically just, you know, um, sleep, time.sleep for, you know, 2.5 seconds. But I don't want to just do that. I want to actually... I have to, I have to check for which player has ships placed. Hmm. So I'm going to do this. We're just basically waiting now for everyone to have their ships placed. Hmm. We have this message in our inbox, right? That's what we've got. It's a message in our inbox. We're replacing our ships. Well, you know what? Let's just make sure that we actually have ship placement working halfway. So we're going to say, you know, while not all, just going to sleep. And then we're going to say, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, print to all players done once we're done. But we don't even have a, a ship's placed flag to ever set, right? So we're never going to get done. We don't know when the ships are going to get placed. That's fine, though. I'm not going to worry about that. Let's just try and get to make sure the prompt is working. So I'm going to go back and kill the server. Then we're going to open this. That's fine. That one's already dead. As is that one. All right, so let's go up here and relaunch the server. And then connect as David. Then connect over here as Splavid. I should get prompted. We're not prompted. Okay, so prompt for ship plays is not defined. So I need to hit you self on line 93. 93, yeah, I want this. Self.prompt for ship placement, the player. Okay, okay. Let's kill the server again. Relaunch it. Relaunch this client. That'll be David. Launch this client. This one's going to be Splavid. Okay, so we got extra data. So uh, something went wrong here with this request. The JSON decoding went wrong. That's weird. So what went wrong with the decode? We got extra data somehow for this um, prompt. Prompt for ship placement. So we just message. Message type. Ship placement prompt. Player UID. Okay. And then the ship map is the ship template. It's, uh, it's a map. That should be fine. Then we append it. Okay, and then when we send the data, let's see here. Send messages. Send to the UID, the connection. Then we uh, dump the JSON into an output message. That should be fine. Decode error, extra data, line one. Character 99. Let's go to the client here. So we have this uh, decode error where? Where does this happen? Response is load JSON. So up here, way up here in the response. So our receive string, I'm actually going to print the receive string in this case and see what the hell's going on here. So print receive string. That's, that's going to be some for debugging stuff. Let's try this again. I want to see what that JSON looks like, but it's so whack. Why so whack, JSON? David's our username on this one. We're going to do Splavid on this one. 
boom. So here's our bad JSON. Okay. Well, we can't get connected players? Okay, that's interesting. So something broke here. To print, player UD is one. Message string, here's players. David's Blavid, message type. Why do we have two different things combined? That doesn't seem right. That's probably why our problem is, huh? Yeah, they're combined into one send. Why? Because it sends them both so rapidly? Let's go to the server. Send messages. So we pop out one message. And then we send that message. So it sends it so fast, we get two objects. Because receive can receive more than one thing at a time. More than one send at a time, I guess. And why does this have an extra... Oh yeah, because this is the, the map right here. So we actually have two. We have two um, JSON objects here. Well, that's funny. It comes out as two things. How do I uh, deal with that on the client side? Sometimes the response might be two different things combined. And we can't load string because we actually have more than one type of thing that's loaded here. Hmm. Well, I mean, I could split it, right? Let's do that. I mean, we can say, well, no, we can't really split that easily is the issue. Because I want to say, you know, split it after the curly bracket, but we have to know it's a top-level curly bracket. Huh, well... We could use a regular expression, I guess, and make and get some matches. Right, because that, that won't do a sub-match. It won't match within itself. I'm pretty sure. That's one way to handle the recursion. Hmm, well, is there... Maybe a JSON function I can use that will load more than one object at a time. Let's go to here and uh, go to the JSON. I'm just going to do this. All right, so we have this uh, load string, right? Okay, so we have load string. Let's load one string. Encoding, class, object hook, parse float, parse int, parse constant, object pairs, hook equals none. Decode, raw decode, encoder stuff. Default iter encode. Hmm. Encode the given object O oh, and yield each string representation as available. Hmm. I don't know. It doesn't sound right. So I'm actually going to do a search here. Let's do a Google search for, um, you know, Python, JSON, decode multiple. Do you see what's multiple just an object in a file? Yes. How can I lazily read multiple just on values from a file stream? 
Multi-system objects in one file extract by Python. These are all what I want. Let me check um, these. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. We got multiple objects. What do you have here? This seems like not what I want. Read the file in pieces, append each piece to the last, and try to parse that new chunk. If it doesn't parse, can you do Ah, oh, man, that sounds horrible. I want to do that. Parses, return it, and restart the process. That sounds fucking horrible. So we have in.txt here. Sure, you can do this. You just have to take uh, to raw decode it directly. And this implementation loads the whole file to memory and operates on that string. If you have large files, you can modify it. White space. Uh, I don't like that. And generally, isn't very good for this sort of incremental use. There's no standard way to serialize multiple objects. Okay, so we easily loaded one at a time without parsing the whole lot. Okay. All right, so I want to parse this file here. Is it just on a right format? Yeah, but I have it might be in my case it might be very. All right, basic idea is to signal the reader split on the carriage. No, 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 no. Okay, so here's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try uh, uh, regular expressions. All right, so let's review regular expressions. I know, I know, not supposed to do that. Alright, so let's see here. So let's, uh... Let's, um, go to our client. The client code. Here's what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm going to create a regular expression. I'm gonna import RE. I'm gonna make a regular expression object, um, called, like... Um, JSON message is re dot compile a raw string. It's going to start with uh, that. And then, uh, you know, there's going to be some amount of space, maybe, followed by. Uh, a message type uh, like this uh, message type okay and then it's going to um, be you know some amount of whateverness followed by a closing bracket, and that's a one whole message. Well, no, no, because then it will match up to, fuck. Like, how do I make sure it only matches the top level? Because that'll match, uh, you know, the end of any dictionary, you know, any map within the object. It won't wait until, you know. How do we only match uh, top level from there to there? Goddamn regular expressions, man. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, and we could just split it at new lines at the client, at the server level. Or 
or we could just actually put in some kind of unique split, like a split object in there to break it apart at. Hmm. Hmm, how am I going to handle this? We've got to find a way to break up these messages, right? We have to find a way to separate them. So we can easily split them up into multiples. What's a good character for that? New line? Because what happens if I put a new line into... Um, a string? I feel like it'll still... Yeah, I feel like that wouldn't work. Because the string itself might have a new line in it. There is no character, though, that I can say for sure won't be inside the actual message. Unless we encode the message with like URL encoding or something like that. And then decode it. I kind of like that idea. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So here's what I'm going to do, then. I'm going... Well, I, spl I, I strip it, though. Right? I strip it. I always strip my code because I don't want to have new lines and shit floating around. Uh. I don't trust. I have no idea how these, you know, these implementations of the sockets might handle new lines. I always like to strip whatever I receive or send. Okay, well, here's what I'm going to do first of all. I'm going to indent... Cause we know we're going to get multiple responses, right? So I'm going to say, you know, responses. And we're going to say for response in responses. I'm going to indent all this code now. Because we know we can get multiple responses. We don't know how we're going to split it yet. We've got to split it somehow. So I'm going to indent everything... Okay. Here we go. Do all this nonsense. Okay. There. Now we have multiple responses, and we're splitting up, and we're dealing with them one at a time. We gotta deal with how to split them, though. We gotta find a way to split them up. Is that Templar? I do like to strip... Oh, wait, coding. That's how we do it, man. Gotta strip them before we send them. Alright. Yes, the receiver gets stripped, right? The receiver gets stripped. Um, that doesn't mean we can't split it at a new line. In fact, that might even make things easier for us. Right? If we put a new line after every object, I think that's what I'm going to do. Right, and we can split it up. So I'm going to say, you know, uh, we load the string. Responses is, you know, uh, um, json.loads x for x in. Um, receive string dot split at the new line character. I think that might actually be the default for a split. Let's go see what that's all about. Sounds like a prison. All ingoing outgoing message messages will be stripped. <laughs> that's true. All right, let's. Uh, so I want to check out what's the how does strip work for or split for uh, string. Capitalize, blah, 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 find, format, format, is title, less strip, partition, split. It defaults to none. Okay. If step is given, uh, okay, they're not grouped together, okay. 
If it's not specified, a different uh, algorithm is applied here. Runs of consecutive white space are regarded as a single operator, and the result will contain no empty strings at the start or end. Okay. So yeah, so I don't want to split on white space. I want to split on on uh, the new line characters. So let's gonna, let's do that. Let's go back here. I'll go to the uh, server. We're gonna go to the client actually for now. We're gonna split it at the new line character, yeah. Okay. So I think that might work. Actually, I'm gonna print responses as a diagnostic here. Okay, so that's uh, a pretty simple fix. Supposing I can go now to the server and append a new line to whenever we send a message. So what do we got here? When are we sending messages here? Send messages. Okay, so send all. Uh, we encode that. But I actually want to send the output message plus a new line character. Well, no, no. Uh, yeah, because that's not a string. It's not a string. So I want to uh, I want to do like this. Um, yeah, it's gonna be tough. Like this slash n dot format. with this string. No, this is too complicated. I'm going to do it like this. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to say, uh, you know, the uh, send string is going to be json.dumpstring output message plus that. Easy. Put a new line at the end. Then we're going to say send string dot encode. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. There. Simple. So that might work, but I feel like it probably won't. Let's kill this uh, server here. All right, serving forever. That's a good sign. Now, is this going to work at all right away? Okay, so we have already a list, and it gives what we want, right? A message type, a login prompt. Okay, so I'm going to be David. All right, so we have one message in this response. Okay, it's going to be working. So far, so good. And I'm going to be splavid. Okay, so that works. Okay, so that actually worked pretty well. So all we need to do now is make sure that if we send a string, the object is to have no new lines in it. If it has a new line in it, it's going to cause a lot of trouble, I think. Okay. So according to for the carrier, um, I'm going to say, you know, uh, A1 V. B1 V, C1 V, D1 V, and E1 V. Okay, so ship placement, you know, now we have the prompt working. So that's progress. That is progress. Hmm. All right. I'll do the same thing on this side. A one V, B one V, C one V, D one V, E one V. All right. So we kind of. So now this side has the response. Right, we got the response. We sent the response. So let's check out what the server is doing with that. I forget what, how that's going to work. So we have these... Uh, where's our method for handling... We can send messages to clients. Yeah, we need a thread for receiving from the client. And then... Uh, put it in the, in the inbox. So we don't have that thread yet. 
We can get that working here before we start uh, Streets of Rage. <sighs> Your Templar, you feel like you want to play some Streets of Rage? Maybe, maybe not. Right now I'm flying solo for the next time slot. Thanks to technical problems. Alright, so uh, now I want to receive messages from this client and then put them into the game's outbox. So let's uh, do that. I want to have like a... So let's just handle client, right? That's fine. So we can actually use this thread to do that. There's already a thread that does that already. All right, so I'm just going to say, you know, uh, while true, um, you know, request equals, or let's say requests equals con dot receive we're going to say you know it's, it's like last time right it's going to be a uh, json dot load s x for x in con dot receive 1024 dot strip we're going to say like you know Receive string equals uh, con dot receive one thousand twenty four dot strip dot decode. Then we're gonna say you know for x in the receive string dot split on new lines okay. They're going to say, uh, you know, for request in requests, uh, you know, well, we can just say, you know, uh, player, right? So that's who we are. We're, we're a new player, right? New player dot game dot uh, inbox dot append or is there like an append all? Like I want to uh, just send this entire list of requests to the inbox. We've got built in types I want to check here. Built-in types, uh, like an array or a list, are called. All right, so what we got here. Uh, I think just add them together, right? You can like add uh, arrays together. Uh, clear, copy, extend. Extends s contents of t. Okay, that's what I want. Extend. So let's go here, and I want to extend the inbox with my current list of messages that I just received. So I want to append, I want extend. All right, so now um, we get all of our responses sent right to that game's inbox. Then let's wait for a bit. 2.5 seconds. Okay, so now we have to find a way for the game to check its inbox. We should make sure the request is formatted correctly. Let's call this a bug. 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 I'm 
right on here in note actually as well. Put a note here too. Note. Okay, and then right here as well. A note, all these bugs. Here's another one. Okay, so we got a lot of bugs here. That's fine. Any other bugs that need noting? That's not a bug. It's a feature we gotta fix. Alrighty, not too shabby. Okay, I'm gonna be right back, guys, and then I'm going to um, do a little more programming, and then we're gonna move on to Streets of Rage. One second, guys. Come get some! Well, oh, I'm still alive! Oh no, run back, run back, run back, run back, run back! No! No! <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, Justin, this guy's the real thing, dude. This dragon's the real thing. He doesn't ever halfway anything, and I respect that about him. But he's still definitely a dick. All right, sorry about the wait, guys. We're back in business. So, uh, we got about 10 more minutes left to program. What do I want to do here? I want to uh, actually s at least recognize the ship placements and maybe try and place them. So, where are we at in the server? Here's the game, right? Um, it prompts for placement. We have place ships here. Alright, so the players aren't ready. When we receive... We need another thread for dealing with messages, messages we've received, right? That's what I feel like. We're going to keep it in this thread for now. And just say, you know, uh, they should check the entire list of its own inbox. And if it doesn't find uh, a ship uh, placement message, just keep on searching, huh? Well, let's see here. How about we say for message in self.inbox if message message type equals equals ship placement then we can say you know uh, We'll say, uh, we have the player UID, right? That's what we have. So we can, s how do we find our own player from our UID? 
we have a list of players, right? But what we need is um, a map. Let's fix that right now. So we can be more like the other. Uh, let's go right here and we're going to do like a map of players. UIDs to players, to player objects. So when we collect players and they join. So while links of this, that's, that should still work. Okay. All right. Print all players. This would probably get changed. For player and stuff dot players. Um, values. All right. Exit username for self dot self dot players dot values now. Okay. We're going to say uh, usernames is a list. It's going to go like, uh, you know, x dot username for x in self dot players dot values. Then we can say, uh, you know, Username string is going to be, uh, yeah, like that. That works. Print all players. Okay, okay. Self.players zero. Uh, no, it's not going to work anymore, right? You want self.players.values zero. Like values like that. All right. And so now for print to all players, um, we're going to need to fix this as well. For a player in self.players.values. There we go. All right. And then when we get a new player here, we're going to go down here to accept clients, um, handle clients. We're going to put them into a game, right? So players, um, you know, uh, high UID or self dot high UID equals new player there there we go that should work so we can go back up here to um, place ships if, our, if we have ship place we can say uh, you know um Player equals message player UID. I want to actually use that to go into our map, right? So self dot players message player UID. Okay, that's our player now. Now we want to place his ships onto his board. Right? Well, no, no, no. We're going to make him ready for now. Put code here for actually placing the ships. We're just going to make him ready up. We're going to say player dot ships placed equals true. Okay, so eventually it's going to say done. That's my goal is forever to say done now. Let's see if we can make that happen. Go up here. Slay this. Relaunch it. Go to the client up here. Relaunch this. I can actually get rid of that. Actually, I'm going to get rid of that first. So let's uh, um, kill this and kill the server. I don't need this diagnostic code anymore. It's going to make a lot of noise. Let's go to the client here and get rid of this print responses. Let me go here and write uh, note bug. All right. All right. That's fine. Okay, so now we can go launch this code again. Battleship server, relaunch. The client not going to be printing off all these random JSON anymore. That's cool. David. 
Watch this. Splavid. Got connected to players. I don't got a prompt for any ships yet, though. Here we go. Dict values does not support indexing. What? <laughs> what do you mean does support indexing? <laughs> oh my god. That's madness. All right, let's kill this. God, I hate these goddamn pseudo list objects in Python. Let's go to the server again. I just mix into a fucking list. Let me see how the best ways to do that. I mean, I know that I can do that. Uh, you know, I can brute force it. So I'm just going to say dict values does not support indexing. Okay. If there's a view object, yeah. Okay, it turns a view, okay. You need to wrap it, you call them, take values in a call to list. Okay, I kinda, that's probably how I was going to do it, but I want to make sure that was kosher. I just want to brute force it to be a list. Let's go to the server in that case. Um, you know, current turn. Just make it into a list. There. Okay, let's relaunch the server again. Launch David. Launch Splavid. Okay. Got kind of players, now what? Okay, int object has no attribute ships placed. Why is player an int? Let's kill this. What do we got here? Something went horribly wrong. That would be on our wall line, right? 93 in place ships. So right here. For player in self.players.values. Doi. Okay. That should work now. Launch you. Launch you. Okay. And then launch Splavid here. So now we got coordinates. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to say, you know, like A1V, B1V, C1V, D1V, E1V, boom. So now we're going to wait. Now we're going to try to place these ones here. A1V, B1V, C1V, D1V, E1V. Got it done? We got it done? No. So same error here. I made the same mistake again. On 95, while not all. Yes. Players.values. There we go. Now it should work. Player is self.players. Yeah, okay, that's what I want. Okay, so let's kill this. Relaunch everything. This should give us a done message now. David. Splavid. Oh, I'm sorry. Splavid. Okay, so let's place them all. A1V, B1V, C1V, D1V, E1V. Okay. And then we'll do uh, A1V, B1V, C1V, D1V, and E1V. Got done? No, what have I done? Damn, I'm so stupid. So now I want to self. But I know that's going to work. We got, we got all the way to self print all players, right? So we know it works. Okay. So, um, how does the code work in the old thing for making, for placing ships? It's almost time for uh, Streets of Rage. But is it simple enough for me to place these ships? How do I, is there a thing called, like, here we go, place ship. At a coordinate. Ship is none on that coordinate. Okay, okay. I'm going to copy this code wholesale. Oh, 
over to our new server. So I just place ships code. Um, actually, I'll put this on the board, right? Board should have a place ships method. There we go. All right, let's see here. So, uh, place ship is a new method on this board. Add a coordinate string and an orientation value. And then the ship itself. Okay, so translate chord to YX. All right, so this one already has like a coordinate map. Do we ever use this coordinate map? Let me, uh, yeah, we use we fire on. We use fire on for the coordinate map. That's weird. I think the board should just have a translate chord to YX or to XY, right? Let's just do that right now. So, um, Let's go cut paste that code over here. Where is that? Uh, translate chord to YX. Here we go. Translate chord to YX. Let's just copy paste this. It's very, very simple. All right, go here. So translate chord to, uh, let's call this XY, though. I think it might work as XY. We have a coordinate string. All right, so before we use like this comma system, let's not do that. Um, I mean, I guess we could. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to say... Uh, Letter coordinate is, uh, you know, self dot x chord map. Self dot x chord map. Let's call this x chord. Then y chord. equals self dot y chord map like that one then minus one no 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 just like this and then we want to return um, the letter chord and the number chord Or no, no, excuse me, X chord and Y chord. Okay, let's play this translate chord to XY now. So I can go down here, I can just translate that. So I just say, uh, you know, uh, um, X chord, Y chord. equals target player dot board dot translate chord to xy chord string yeah I want to just call it translate chord here we go All right, so now we have this all figured out. The target tile, we've got that figured out now. All right, we're going fire. Simple. So now we have these coordinates, right? We have a coordinate string. Let's just send it actual coordinates, though. So place ship at um, 
coordinate tuple. Orientation and ship. Can I, uh, like, package? I don't think so. I don't know. Let's not worry about that. Let's set it a tuple. Orientation and then the ship. All right. So we have uh, this coordinate tuple, right? Let's just say, call it XY equals coordinate tuple. All right. So, board XY. Uh, that's a tile, right? So we're going to say, uh, you know, that tile dot ship equals ship. All right, that seems like it might work. Seems almost too simple. So I want actually uh, not board, but a self dot field. Okay. Yeah, it seems pretty straightforward. Almost too straightforward. Well, let's just see what happens if I try and make it work. All right, so place ships, um, you know. Here's the code for placing the ships. Let's say four um, ship title in message ship map So the player, he's a, he's a map of ships, right? No, he's a list of ships. Okay. Uh, is that what I want to do? The how I want to make that work? I think I'd rather have a map of ships. With like a UID to a ship. Uh, let's not fuck with that for now. So we have, we have uh, ship placements, right? So first ship title in message ship map. Now the player he has a bunch of ships, right? Append ship. Ship ship title. Okay. So there's this ship map where we have all these titles. Okay, I know what I want to do. I know what I want to do. So I want to say uh, for ship. How about? Right, for ship in player dot ships, we can say um, player dot board dot place ship, and then we want to actually place it at a coordinate. What do we got here? Place ship coordinate. Orientation ship. Actually, I want to put ship first in this case. So I want a uh, ship, then core double, then orientation. Here we go, like that. All right. So um, you know, place ship. I want to place the ship that is, um, you know, uh, our ship. Yeah, place ship. And then I want to say. Uh, the coordinates are going to be let's let's get those coordinates right. So I would say uh, x chord y chord equals and how's this um, response coming to us again? Let's go to the client again. We have this ship placement uh, uh, coordinates. So what is that? Just a string. It's a string being sent to us. Okay. 
camera. I got you. So let's go with uh, x y chord x chord y chord is going to be uh, player dot board dot translate chord. We're gonna say uh, like you know chord string equals message. And what was it called again? Coordinates. All right. Coordinates like that. And then we're going to say, um, you know, x y. It's called x y. Make some space in this line. Translate chord chord string like that. Okay, so I have an X and a Y. Then we're going to place the ship at a tuple of X and Y. And then we have um, the orientation. So I'm going to say chord string, we're going to say orientation equals message orientation. Like that. Okay. So here's the, how we placed a ship. That's gonna. I mean, that's supposed to work. That seems pretty wacky. Oh yeah, here's our problem. Yeah. So the, the chord string is not message coordinates. It's a it's a map than a map. So it would be message ship map. Um, ship title oh yeah that's craziness so let's just say you know that uh, map ship equals message ship map Ship title. Uh, something's wrong with that, though. Hang on, let me go back to this. It's not ship title. It's actually, uh, you know, sh our ship title. So that would be like ship dot title, like that. Right. Let's go to the client here. We have a lot of recursion, right? So we have this um, ship map. So yeah, we have this message type, ship placement. It has a ship map. And that map has another map in it of coordinates and orientation. Okay. Again, let's go back to our server here. Yeah, that's what I want right there. All right, so the map ship is there. So the coordinate string is the um, map ship coordinates. This one is the mapped ship orientation. Okay, now that might work. Alright, that seems uh, pretty crazy. So we can map the ship that we want to the coordinates that we want. Alright, is that probably going to crash everything you would think, right? So this is supposed to raise an error at some point. Why? If orientation is that, and else that. So yeah, so this, I don't want to raise. That's crazy. Let's just go, um, you know, like a note. Note. Assumes, excuse me, this is also a bug. Bug. Assumes correct formatting. Let's just get rid of this. Say else. Yeah, so here we go. This seems pretty fucking crazy. Like it's not going to work. Let's launch our server again.
uh, invalid syntax on line 47 here. Also on line 48. Uh, what? Return. So yeah, something's wrong. I don't need to. Someone told me I don't need to put uh, parentheses around these anyway. Okay, I need another one of these. There we go. All right, boom. Launch this client. Boom. David. Launch the client. Splavid. Okay, the coordinates, A1, V, B1, V, C1, V, D1, V, E1, V, and that should be it. But probably going to crash the server, I would think. Yeah. The board has no actual x-coordinate map. Are you sure about that? Pause. It's supposed to. Where's the board? x chord map. It has no actual x chord map. X chord map is right there. The board object right there has no attribute. X chord map. Here we go. Here's our problem. Self not X chord map. I'm sorry. All right, now we're talking. Now it has an X coordinate and a Y coordinate map. I can even move them up here if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, so let's relaunch this server here. Go to the client. Uh, I can actually kill this now. This one didn't die either. Okay, here we go. That one did die. All right, so let's uh, go to the, this one here. Batch of client. We're going to call this David. We're going to go down here and do another one that's Splavid. Something went wrong here? No, I decided to wait. Alright, so we want A1V, B1V, C1V, D1V, and E1V. Boom. No error yet. Oh, there we go. Ship has no ship size. Okay, so there's, uh, what is that, line 53. A very reasonable error. Yes. So ship.size. All right, so it's trying to play stuff. That's a good sign, I guess. That would be David. This one down here is going to be Splavid. All right, what do we got here? Uh, A1V, B1V, C1V, D1V, and E1V. A1V, B1V, D, uh, C1V, D1V, and E1V. Boom. Done. So it seems to have tried to place the ships anyway. Interesting. Much more than I expected. I wish I could see them, right? I wish I could see the ships. Where's the code? We're already kind of late here, but where is the code for printing off? Let's see here. Uh, it's, in the it's in the old server. There's code for printing off the board. Print the map. Yeah. Now, ships. these ships have glyphs back in the day, but I wanted the client to handle that for now. Okay. As a, I'm actually going to put this into the server just to see if it works. Oops, I want to actually undo this. Let's go to our new server here and put this somewhere in the game, right? So I'll click on place ships. I'm going to say uh, def diagnostic 
print board. Self board. Okay, I'm going to go down here and print that in there and get rid of that. So we're going to say for row in board. This doesn't seem right. For column in row. If column one. Yeah, so now we have tiles. So I don't have these old archaic tuples. So I'm going to say, you know, for, let's say for tile in row, right? For tile in row. If tile one is not, so tile one used to be what? The, whether or not there was a ship there? Let's see here. Yeah. So, yeah, so tile one is whether or not there's a ship there. It's the peg. So, we're going to say, uh, you know, if tile.peg is none, or it's called peg, right? Tiles have pegs, I think. Yes. Okay. Uh, if show ships is false. Oh, okay, so I'm going to put in like a show ships here. Show ships. Let me see here. Else, if there is no ship there, then print nothing. So I'm going to say if tile.ship is none, then print nothing. Else, um, add in the ship glyph. We're not going to have any ship glyphs for now. I'm just going to say, uh, you know, add in, you know, M. M means there's a ship there. So now we say uh, if the peg is miss, then print X. If tile.peg is hit, then print O. Okay, I mean, that kind of might work. So now let's go to the pl ship placement. So now it says done. I also want to print off um, you know, one of our boards. Let's just say uh, print diagnostic print board, you know, uh, list self.players.values at index zero, their board, and then uh, true. I want to show ships. All right. All right, let's see what happens here if it prints off anything. Launch the server again. Launch his client again. David. You can be splavid. I want to place our ships here. So I want to be a one V. And then, you know, uh, C one V. E one V. G one V G it's E F G H I one V. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. A one V C one V E one V G one V and uh, I one V. So we got a done message here. We should done. Okay, what happens over here now? Damn! Oh, I fucked up. <laughs> I was so fuck. All right, it's fine. <laughs> fine. Let's do that. I have to add in self there. All right, let's try this again. It's kind of tedious. So I wish I had wrote some code to test this automatically. 
but it's changing so rapidly what has to get tested, so. Alright. Splavid. A1V, C1V, E1V, G1V, I1V. A1V, C1V, E1V, G1V, I1V. Board is not iterable. Oh, right, right, right. We have to use the field. All right, so for row in board.field. Okay. Let's try that again. David. Blavid. All right. A one V, C one V, E one V, G one V, I one V. A one V, C one V, E one V, G one V, I one V. Okay. So it printed them. Um, in the wrong directions, but it did work. You know, I got the coordinates mixed up somehow again, as usual. So, how am I going to fix that? Let's uh, go back up to where we're placing the ships on the board. So wait, 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 no, 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 it's actually getting the wrong coordinate, it's translating them wrong. But also, the V and X is also bad. And so it's got bad translation, because these are, you know, they should be going A through I, uh, A through J up here, instead it's going A through J this way. And also, uh, it's placing them wrong. The V is the opposite of, you know, what it should be. So translate chord, um, coordinate string. So let's see here. X chord, Y chord. That's correct. It's translating that coordinate correctly? No, it's not. It's translating it incorrectly. But how can that be? Coordinate string. That doesn't seem right. It should at least be placing the first string in the right spot. The first uh, coordinate. Why isn't it placing this right here? Because the way placing ships works. Yeah, okay. So field is X, Y. For Y in X rows. Okay, for X in, okay, that's fine. So we have this. Hmm. Well, I mean, all I gotta do is, you know, reverse this. We have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. I gotta say, uh, you know, Y, X. So I replace that with that and replace that with that. Let's see if that works. We're getting closer, guys. We're getting closer. This might work already. This might be fine. All right, so, yeah, let's be David. And let's be Splavid. All right, so I actually want to go here and play some stuff. So A1V, C1V, E1V, G1V, I1V. A1V, C1V, 
E1V, G1V, I1V. Now what happens? There we go. Okay, so that fixed the problem. Okay, so this is a good spot for us to stop. That means that we can place ships now. With a pretty now the client actually handles some you know handles its own business in terms of generating a object for us to place ships from. We have a lot of bugs that we have a lot of error checking to do, but that's fine. Next week on Friday, we're going to go through and re-implement the firing logic. Right, so you can fire on different spots on the board. I'm going to leave this diagnostic code here. That should be, I'm actually going to remove this part though. Yeah, let's remove this part. Okay. So yeah, we have a bit pretty good progress today. Our skeleton's looking quite a bit nicer. Has probably a little bit more cleaning to do. We might have to go through and clean it up a little bit again because we have added in quite a lot of nonsense. Um, we might have to break this up into smaller pieces here, for instance, like place ships. This gets pretty far indented. I'd rather not do that if avoidable. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it's looking pretty damn nice. Pretty damn nice indeed. Um, yeah, next we're going to implement the firing logic and, of course, the game finish logic. Then we're probably going to um, tighten it up a little bit, make it a little bit more flexible in terms of you know allowing more than one, uh, more than two users to play at the server at any one time, and that kind of thing. More flowery stuff, guys. As usual, if you enjoy hanging out, if you want to keep the channel online, check out my Patreon page, Patreon.com/slash/Venkabot. Where even a dollar is a huge help. You know, put the taco in my belly every month, it makes the stream more sustainable. Um, if you're like me, you're totally broke though, right? Or maybe you have a little bit of scratch, but you'd rather spend it on other things that are, you know, more pertinent than helping uh, a streamer with, uh, you know, buying a taco or whatever. Help for free in that case. I totally understand, man. No hard feelings. Um, you know, uh, you can uh, get in the chat, come say hi. You can uh, follow on Twitch for free. You can tell your friends we're here and save clips of highlights that you enjoy, like funny stuff, scary stuff, um, salty stuff. You know, mostly I do like uh, gaming streams. They're not usually programming, so there's actually more to clip. There's nothing to clip. Don't clip anything on this stream. That'd be madness. Hey, thank you for the bits, Kaiju. Welcome aboard, dude. Just in time here for Streets of Rage 2 to start. Um, yeah, coming up next, it's going to be Streets of Rage 2 net play. If you have a retro arc, um, definitely play with me today. Uh, I have no second player yet. I might not, depending on how things go. But if you have retro arc, definitely play with me. It's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Yeah, also, you can uh, check out my YouTube channel, guys. That's at uh, youtube.com slash venkabotarchive, one word. Um, youtube.com slash venkabotarchive. And there I have all of my past streams archived. They're not all public yet, but they're, they're, they are all archived on there. Excuse me. Um, you know, including entire long plays of like Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, and Bloodborne and Neo in playlists for your convenience, like a long play playlist. Also, we have, um, you know, uh, retros like Sonic the Hedgehog, Commander Keen, Metal Gear Solid, Instant Dream, Super Metroid, and more. And horror games like Dead Space, The Evil Within, we have AAAs like The Last of Us, and GTA V. And indies like Dropsy, Toki Toro, the Mega Strike, and a 20XX, and plenty, plenty more. As well as online games like uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, me and my friends, uh, excuse me, me and my friends playing for the first time. That was a lot of fun, as well as uh, Fortnite Battle Royale and GTA Online. So Kaiju says, uh, I would I would play, but I'm getting this stuff ready for downright fierce 14. Only 14? Yo, seems like you've been doing it for longer than that. Also, I got a guy dropping off an alpha cabinet on Sunday. Oh my god, Kaiju. That sounds amazing. Like a real old school alpha cab? Or even like a custom job? Either way, it'd be fucking awesome. Yeah, I'm going to go a very short break here, guys. Come back in a few minutes with uh, Streets of Rage uh, 2. Uh, don't go nowhere. I'll see you guys very shortly. Yes, sir. An actual, honest to God, retro alpha cabinet. God damn. It still has the original suicide battery in it, and I gotta swap it ASAP. It still hasn't popped? You know, my favorite thing about racism is when you're on Craigslist or whatever on, you know, OkCupid or whatever, and yo, my dude is grabbing elixirs like it's nothing. He said, oops, I got an elixir. A lot of people are like, I only date black guys. I only date white guys. It's not racist. It's just a preference.
according to the guy that owns it, it has the original in it, and I don't want to lose that board. So I'm getting to, uh, getting to work the second he drops it off. God damn. That hopefully it's not already blown up. The EX flash job. Good block from crime. Okay. Ooh, okay. Got a reset there. Crime trying to make a comeback. Ooh, that's so sick! I would I gotta see that again. Somebody clip that. He like red parried out of the shield and then slash elbowed. No, he showed me that it still powers up and the game boots. Oh my god. <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be like you're gonna be like a fucking surgeon, dude. You're gonna be like a nurse, wipe my brow. <laughs> oh my god, hand all twitching and shit. 